the tide's turning, there's a storm in the air, voices rising up, saying life ain't fair, we're fed up with the lies, it's time for truth, a new wave is coming, built on hope and proof. Kamala blames Trump while Teamsters exit. Welcome to Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin, where we dive into the facts and cut through the noise to bring you real unbiased news from all angles, right, left, and center. As always, our goal is to inform, not censor, because in this constitutional republic, freedom of speech reigns supreme. And today we're unpacking major headlines that have far-reaching implications for our country, our economy, and our way of life. I'm Peter Boykin. I'm a constitutionalist for liberty, former political candidate, maybe in the future again, we don't know. And I'm a citizen journalist. And I'm going to bring you these details of these headlines. First, let's start with the rise of Donald Trump's favorability which has jumped five points to 46%, while Kamala Harris saw her rating drop two points to 44%. That's according to a Gallup poll. Again, I do not see how it's tight. I really don't. Trump should be way ahead. I see conflicting things. I see Trump doing great in North Carolina. Then I see other polls that say Harris is doing great. Polls are just something to kind of motivate people. Really, at the end of the day, it's going to come down to our vote. And it's going to come down, especially in North Carolina, with the unaffiliated vote. The numbers suggest that more Americans are reevaluating what the current administration has done or failed to do for our country. Harris's focus on her so-called joy campaign, because she laughs so much, is starting to wear thin as real-world issues like the border crisis, inflation, and national security concerns take precedence for many voters. You laughs and you're moving forward and all your little other things does not pay my bills at the end of the day. 54% support for mass deportations. A revealing poll shows 54% of, 54 of Americans now favor mass deportation of illegal migrants or immigrants. With the border crisis being a hot topic, especially considering recent allegations that the Biden-Harris regime suppressed data showing an increase in illegal crossings tied to terrorism, this isn't surprising. People want action, and this data reflects a growing concern about national security and immigration policies. Wouldn't it be nice if we could have built that wall that Donald Trump said and built it right and not this wide open wall that we have right now? Meanwhile, House rejects proof of citizen voting requirement. Speaker Mike Johnson's proposal to link temporary federal funding with proof of citizenship for voter registration was shot down by the House. This was a significant move, especially with election integrity being a crucial issue for many Americans. The rejection raises concerns and questions about why some lawmakers resist policies that ensure only eligible citizens can vote in our elections because they cheat. They cheat. Iran election interference. Speaking of cheating, in other alarming news, the FBI has confirmed that Iran hackers sent confidential Trump campaign documents to Joe Biden's re-election campaign with foreign interference being a focal point of previous election cycles. You have to wonder if the media will give this story the same weight it gave the claims of Russia interference in 2016. No, it won't because it's the only small blurb that I've ever seen about it and it'll go away real quick. High injuries at Trump's rallies. In Arizona, multiple Trump supporters have reported experiencing mysterious eye injuries during one of Trump's rallies. These individuals have come forward stating that they seek medical attention due to the unbearable pain. It's an odd, unexplained phenomenon that has left people with more questions than answers. Well, we had the first attempt in Pennsylvania. We had the second attempt um, uh, in Florida. Uh, he went to New York. There was somebody had a bomb outside in a car. Arizona, there's crazy eye irritants. And now North Carolina, he's supposed to be coming to Wilmington. That's not at the airport. And I've seen the pictures and it looks like a, um, it doesn't look very secure. So I'm, I'm really worried. 
Meanwhile, Kamala blames Trump after woman dies from her legal abortion. In an attempt to shift blame, Vice President Kamala Harris has pointed fingers at Donald Trump for a tragic death of Amber Thurman, a Georgia woman who passed away after complications from a legal abortion. However, the facts of the case reveal a more complicated story. Thurman's death was linked to complications from taking an abortion pill, not any restrictions that Trump imposed. The backstory is Amber Thurman sought to end her pregnancy in 2022 when she was carrying twins. As she lived in Georgia, a state where abortion is prohibited after a fetal heartbeat is detected, she traveled to North Carolina for the procedure. Due to her late arrival, she was given Misfristone, M-I-F-E-P-R-I-S-T-O-N-E, an abortion pill designed to terminate early stage pregnancies. While the pill was successful in ending the pregnancy, it failed to completely clear the fetal rema fecal remains fetal fetal remains from her body, leading to an infection, a known risk of this procedure. I mean, because you got to remember, these pills are easily taken after you get pregnant, after the morning after, when it's still a little small fetus or small small little seed, and it can dissolve. But we are talking about full, almost term babies. This peel dissolves them like acid, bones and everything. It kills the baby. It's just as bad as how they were killing the babies by using forceps and ripping their body parts and apart. You are ripping something that can feel and think at that time. You are pouring acid on a little human and so there's going to be remains. I'll go back to the bird gauge. Might as well go down with the ship. Harris wasted no time in politicizing Thurman's death. She posted on her ex account, claiming Thurman should be alive today if not for she, uh, not for what she termed Trump abortion bans. Harris has used this incident to support her argument that overturning Roe versus Wade has led to a health care crisis. Yet the reality is that Furman died from complications of an abortion procedure that Harris and her allies advocate for expanding. And that's what they believe in. The truth is clear. Donald Trump did not create a nationwide abortion ban. He has repeatedly affirmed that he prefers leaving the issue to the states where individual voters can decide the law. Harris, however, has turned abortion into the centerpiece of her political agenda because they got nothing else. And using Thurman's death to advance her platform demonstrates the extreme lengths to which she will go. This tragedy did not arise from the lack of abortion options. It resulted from a procedure that the vice president supports. All right, let's move back to some other lighter topics like ec economic impact. The Federal Reserve cuts interest rates. The Federal Reserve recently cut interest rates by 0.5 percent, the first reduction in four years. Some see this move as politically motivated, with many believing it's intended to bolster Kamala Harris's chances in the upcoming election. Cutting rates this close to election time raises concerns about whether the Fed is truly independent or, as it claims, are swayed by political winds. It's kind of like, why is the gas prices so low around election time? Why is everything kind of going down below $3? Hmm. Yeah. Don't forget, folks. Meanwhile, California's new censorship law. Governor Gavin Newsom has signed a bill banning digital disinformation during elections. While the intent may seem noble, the term disinformation is highly subjective. It really is. Just think back to all the claims labeled as disinformation during this big C, you know, COVID, that later turned out to be true. Hypernesum, horse drink laws, all that stuff. Uh, this law feels hydrochlorically. This law feels more like an attempt to censor dissenting opinions rather than protect public discourse. I mean, the intentions might be nice, but you know people are going to misuse it. Meanwhile, Border Patrol whistleblower, a top Border Patrol official, has come forward alleging that the current administration ordered him not to release data showing that individuals with terrorist ties are crossing our borders. If true, this cover-up could put national security at even greater risk, raising serious concerns 
about how this information and how this administration is handling immigration and border safety. Horrible. That's what they're doing. Horrible. Meanwhile, rising poison center calls for kids overdosing on energy drinks, you know, like crime and all that. South Park covered it. Another issue that's flown under the radar is the rise of poison cancer calls, which jumped 20% in 2023 due to kids overdosing on energy drinks. With these drinks becoming more accessible to younger consumers, it's crucial for parents to be aware of the dangers. Meanwhile, Trump proposes cap on credit card interest rates and in a move that would directly impact consumers Donald Trump has proposed a temporary 10% cap on credit card interest rates, giving the rising cost of living and increasing radiant reliance on credit. This proposal could bring some much needed relief to struggling Americans. And here's the last big news today. Teamsters withhold endorsement, a major blow to Kamala Harris. And a never significant setback for Kamala Harris, the Teamsters Union, a labor organization with deep historical roots in American politics, has chosen not to endorse her presidential campaign. This is a major loss for Harris as the Teamsters have consistently endorsed Democratic candidates for over 30 years. The facts, though, folks, is that the Teamsters Union, one of the most powerful labor unions in the United States, announced they would not endorse any candidate in the presidential race. This decision came in the wake of two internal polls that revealed overwhelming support for Donald Trump among the union's members. In an electronic poll, 59.6% of Teamsters supported Trump, while only 34% backed Harris. A similar phone survey found that 58% of members favored Trump compared to just 31% for Harris. Now, why does this matter? The Teamsters representing over 1.3 million workers and influential in key battleground states in Ohio, Pennsylvania, Michigan states, critical for a presidential victory. There are only 165,000 Teamster members. Well, there's over 165,000 Teamster members losing their endorsement may not only hurt Harris's credibility with working class voters, but also have electoral consequences. I believe so, too. Trump's response was sharp. He pointed out the significance of this decision, especially considering the union's longstanding Democrat lean. He noted that while the Teamsters may not endorse Republicans, their refusal to back Harris speaks volumes. It's a great honor. They're not going to endorse the Democrats, Trump said. They're basically endorsing Donald Trump. In one way or the other. This is a historic loss for Harris. The last time a Democratic candidate failed to secure the Teamsters endorsement was in 1988 with Michael Dukakis ran for president. The Teamsters union decided uh, decision underscores a growing divide within the Democratic Party's traditional working class base, as many union members are now gravitating towards Trump's message of economic revival and job security. Thanks for tuning in with hashtag go right. We'll be right back with our hashtag go right recap remix. Drum sailor on the rise, can you feel the shift? Come on, let's sit in down, now she's feeling the drift. Public's talking about the deportation. Security is getting tight. Half the people want to change, standing ready to fight. I said no to John's proof of vote. Election integrity has got the nation afloat. Our ends interfering, playing in the game. But the mainstream silent, acting all the same. The tide's turning, there's a storm in the air. Voices rising up, saying life ain't fair. We're fed up with the lies, it's time for truth. A new wave is coming, built on hope and proof. Interest rates cut, the feds playing with the fire. Election season's near, are the motives dire? We're fed up with the lies. Clamping on free speech, but the border whistles blowing truths out of reach. 
Great at cock rates, Trump's got a plan to cap People feeling the squeeze, but relief's in his lap Meanwhile, Kamala's spinning with abortion claims Stretching truth in Georgia, playing dirty games The ground is shaking, the people won't wait Change is change is change is change is change Teamsters say no, Harris lost her grip 30 years strong, but the union's jumping ship Trump's got their backing, the polls don't lie in swing state, she's losing. Watch the eagle fly. Voices in the streets sing a freedom song. No more play in politics, gone on too long. We're standing together, hand in hand. Ready to rise, take back this land. Whistleblower warns the border's under fire Data's been hidden, the stakes couldn't be higher National security, it's our time to demand Truth from the top and a firm steady hand Kamala's campaign stumbling out the gate But the people are done, they're refusing the fate Trump's taking charge with the plan in his pocket While airship sinks like a leaky socket We're moving forward, there's no turning back The truth is coming, it's leading the pack the heartland to the city lights the people are standing for their rights Whoa. the shift is real the winds have changed america's heart has been rearranged truth and freedom that's the call together we rise together we stand tall I think it's time for us to go right. Welcome back to our hashtag go right remac recap remix. Trump's favorability is on the rise while Kamala Harris sees a dip, signaling a shift in public perception. Meanwhile, more than half of Americans support mass deportation of illegal migrants as national security concerns grow. The House rejected Speaker Johnson's proof of citizenship voting requirements, sparking debate over the integrity of future elections. Meanwhile, Iranian election interference has come to light, yet it's unclear how much intention. This will receive in mainstream media, probably none. Meanwhile, Trump fans report strange eye injuries while attending one of his rallies in Arizona. Interest rates were cut by the Federal Reserve with suspicions of political motives swirling as the election approaches. California's new disinformation law is drawing attention for its potential to stifle free speech. And concerns over border security have dropped or deepened after a whistleblower revealed the suppression of terrorist linked data. And finally, Trump's proposal to cap credit card interest rates could bring much needed financial relief today. As for the bigger stories, Kamala Harris has put abortion front and center in her campaign, but her accusations against Donald Trump over the death of a Georgia woman from a legal abortion procedure stretch the truth, as pretty much all her campaign does. Amber Thurman's death was a tragic result of complications from the procedure itself, not from any policies linked to Trump. Harris's attempt to politicize this tragedy only adds to the disillusionment many feel with her leadership. Meanwhile, the Teamsters Union's decision not to endorse Trump, oh, sorry, not to endorse Harris in the presidential race is a major setback. For over three decades, the Teamsters have supported Democratic candidates, but internal polling revealed strong backing for Donald Trump. This could be a major blow for Harris, particularly in key swing states where union members could tip the electoral balance. In both cases, Harris finds himself at odds with crucial voter groups, working class union members, and a broader electorate increasingly skeptical of her leadership. As she pushes her campaign forward, moving forward, it remains to be seen how these developments will impact her ability to unite a divided America, right? Now, thank you for tuning in to Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin. For more 
of these stories. Visit GoWriteNews.com. Follow us on Rumble at GoWriteNews, YouTube, TikTok, and Facebook, and X for the latest updates. You want to support our work? You can donate through Cash App at dollar sign Peter Boykin, the number one. All links can be found at GoWriteNews.com and PeterBoykin.com. So let's keep pushing for truth and transparency in our constitutional republic. Stay informed and hashtag go right. Peace, everybody. God bless.